Hello friends! Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. It is currently Monday, of course, um, and I am determined to get some reading done this week. So all of last week, basically, I didn't read anything because I bought a new Switch game. Are we shocked? Um, but I bought Xenoblade Chronicles 3, which is a JRPG, so it's more like or rather, it's very story heavy. Um, and I've never played the first two Xenoblade Chronicles. But then when the third one came out, there was a lot of hype for it. And it looked really beautiful. So I was kind of like, oh, like, I'm a little interested because of how good it looks. But then also I was like, oh, well, I haven't played the first two. So like, whatever. And I heard the combat is hard. So I wasn't that interested. But then I heard the story of this game. And I was like, absolutely, I need this game in my life. And then I looked it up and there's actually like an easy mode to make the combat like just basically fly by if you want to just focus on the story, which I love. Like I love when games make it accessible for people who are not good at games to enjoy the story. Um, and so I splurged and I bought this game full price. And I'm pretty sure this is like the first like full price $80 plus tax game that I have bought for myself. I bought one for my sister, but like I've never bought one for myself. And so it hurt a little bit because it costs a lot, but I've been playing it nonstop. I think I'm like 13 hours into it, which is it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a lot for me. Anyway, because of that though, I haven't really been reading um, in the last little while, but I do want to actually get some reading done this week. Um, I feel like the only stuff I've read in the last week are kind of romance audiobooks because they're just like the easiest audiobooks for me because I've been like playing a lot on my Switch. I've still been playing Littlewood. Um, but like I said, it's just like a really easy type of book for me to read because if I do miss some information, it's usually like not that big of a deal uh, in a romance. And so I've read a couple of romances in the last week or so. Um, but this week I do want to get back into like eyeball reading. But I do have a couple options here that I have been working on slash was working on before I got addicted to my game. And the first one is first and foremost, of course, Nona the Ninth, which I got an e -arc of a while ago, but I actually do really need to get on to reading because I think it comes out soon. Okay, so I just checked and it comes out on September 13th, um, which is, I think, basically two weeks away. So I'm actually officially allowed to talk about this book now um, and review it. Um, but I'm 46% of the way through it. I am really enjoying it. I feel like it's just such a different tone from the first two. Like this is so weird and you really don't know what's going on. But also the setting of Nona is so incredibly different from Harrow and from Gideon because it actually takes place on what seems like earth and so because of that the tone of this book the vibe of this book is completely different i'm not actually 100 percent sure how i feel about it just yet like i'm enjoying the characters and i love the relationships between the characters and i love the like funny moments but like overall things haven't clicked into place for me yet and i feel like while when i was reading harrow i was so enamored with like everything else that was going on that like the confusion didn't bother me. So like when I read reviews or like looked up reviews of people who didn't really like Harrow and they said that it took too long for it to click into place, I was like, I don't understand. I don't understand what you mean. Um, but I'm kind of understanding what they mean with this book because I feel like things are not really clicking into place yet. And I am eager for that to happen sooner rather than later, uh, which is sad to say but also it's not that I'm not enjoying the book it's just like a really tough book to read sometimes especially after work because it requires brain cells um so for a no brain cell read I have this is obviously the the naked hardback but this is Ruination by Anthony Reynolds this is the League of Legends book um this also comes out in September I don't know when exactly again in September this comes out but this I am 90 pages into this and this is just very fun so far it is just like I don't know anything about League of Legends I've never played League of Legends all I know about League of Legends is Arcane but I'm really enjoying this so far uh, we follow our main character who is well we kind of have like two main plot lines I'd say um but one our main main character I'd say is Callista and she's um kind of like the princess almost sort of basically like her father was supposed to be the next king in this land but then he died and so the the 
what's it called? The lineage got passed down to his brother instead, who's actually younger than Callista. His name is Viego. I think he's like a main character in League of Legends. I'm not 100% sure. So anyway, Viego becomes the king and like Callista is almost like his closest confidant, but she's also like a warrior and she's just like a badass basically. Um, and then we flash forward a little bit and he has married this woman, Isolde, and like they're in love. And then there's like an assassination attempt on the king, but then Isolde end up, ends up getting uh, poisoned by that whole attempt and so she becomes like really ill um, and he wants Callista to go after this like mysterious don't know if it's real mythical like well that is supposed to cure all ailments um, and so that's kind of like where I'm at in the story and I think that's like the setup of the book and then there's this other storyline with this guy called What's his name? Erlok Grael, who I think apparently, okay, I've looked up a little bit online. I really shouldn't have because I feel like I've spoiled bits of the book for myself. Based, like, But I think they're like things that I would consider spoilers, but if you are familiar with the game, you probably already know this. Um, but I think Erlok Grael in, is like some sort of like a monster and non-human kind of character in the games. Um, and Erlok Grael was like, who he was as a human before he became a monster or something. I'm not 100% sure about that, but in the book though, he is like a scholar, a sorcerer of some sorts. And at the beginning of the book, he was kind of like primed to become part of this like elite scholarly secret society type of situation. Um, but he ends up not getting a spot in there. Um, and then he becomes like a warden in these like mysterious aisles, whatever. Um, I don't really understand what he's doing, to be quite honest with you. He's just doing stuff in this like secretive island. But I am really enjoying this. Like it's just a very fast paced, plot heavy, you know, you can go into this book with like no thoughts and just kind of read and have fun with it. Um, so I've been really enjoying that for after like work uh, versus I feel like Nona, I've really just been only been able to get into like on the weekends um, because it just requires so much brain power. Um, but anyway, this was like a really long intro and I have spoken for long enough. Um, but yeah, I'll keep you posted. I don't actually have another audiobook lined up either. Um, so I'll keep you posted on what I end up picking up on audio and also what I end up reading if I end up reading or if I end up just playing more Xenoblade Chronicles 3. So um, that's it for this intro and I will see you at the next check-in. Hello friends, happy Tuesday. I actually don't have too many reading updates. I didn't read too much of Nona yesterday. I'm at 57%, so probably just about 10% of Nona last night. But I did finish part four of the book, so I kind of wanted to do a quick check-in. Shit has officially hit the fan. Like I am at the point now where I'm like, oh, we're, we're doing this. And I think when I first checked in at the start of the week, I was kind of like not sure where this was going. I feel like I was still very confused. I still am very much confused, but I feel like in the last, like 10% of the book things have started coming into place and like falling into place and I now appreciate why we're on earth a little bit more and I don't really know how to talk about this book without spoiling anything all I will say though is that if this ends up becoming what I think it's gonna become and what it turns out to be I think this will be one of the most interesting takes on a specific type of dystopian fiction that I've ever read. I know that's incredibly vague. And if <laughs> this video comes out and you have read Nona, please DM me because I need to talk about this with someone because it is driving me nuts that like I don't have anyone to talk about and bounce ideas off of. So like in my book, like in my e-reader, all the notes are literally just like question marks and like a name question mark. Like it's just so many questions and like so little answers. Um, but I am very excited to continue reading. I don't know how I'm going to balance this because okay, so yesterday I finished watching uh, Selling the OC, which was terrible. Selling Sunset is one of my favorite reality TV shows, but Selling the OC was honestly a mess. And I don't even know if it was a mess in a good way. Um, but anyway, I finished watching that. So I don't have anything else to watch today, but I will be reading more of Nona. And I also will be hopefully playing my video game because I need to get back to that.
I, it's been a day. Like, I didn't play at all yesterday. And I feel like something is missing from my life, you know? I just feel like this game is phenomenal. Did I even explain the concept of this game? Okay, so it's like a very, like, story-heavy game. It's kind of like a sci-fi. It's not really explained in the third game, but from what I understand of this world is that there are these, like, creatures called, like, titans, or, like, they're gods, rather. Um, but basically, um, they're so large and like they move so slowly that like organisms and like life has like formed on these gods and so like people live on these titans and that's like the world that we're in but in this story in particular we follow these like two like nations of people um and these two nations are constantly at war they're constantly killing each other because when they kill someone else with their blades that they like summon when they do that, their life force gets, like, sucked back into their colony. They have to, like, keep this, like, thing called the flame clock, which is where, like, human souls go once they're dead. They have to keep this, like, flame clock going. Otherwise, like, they die, I guess. I don't know. It's not really clear what happens if the flame clock runs dry. Um, but basically, we follow these, like, three soldiers from, like, each side. Um, and basically, all they've known in their lives is, like, to fight they've been trained from the day that they are born to fight um, and every single soldier has 10 years to live and then at the end of the 10 years they have what's called a homecoming which means that they die basically um, they try to make it seem like it's this like you know ceremony of honor or whatever but basically they die but one day there is like a ship a mysterious ship that lands kind of in between the two territories um that it doesn't belong to either of these like nations and so each of the colonies send out um a team to go and investigate this and then that's kind of like where our story begins we have these like two groups of three people that meet on this battlefield and they basically are confronted with an, an entirely like new force that they have to defeat and then they also meet the pilot of this ship that landed and they see him and they're very confused because he's an old man he's like 60 years old they've never seen an old person in their life because again in their colonies once you turn 10 you die and so they have never seen anyone with wrinkles on their face and so they're very very confused by how this person even exists and this person reveals to them that like you know, life is more than just these 10 years of battles. It's a very interesting story about like morality and life and like the purpose of life and like how to make an impact with what you have, what time you have left on earth. Like it's a very, the themes are very interesting. Honestly, this, this game, the story in this game is just phenomenal. So phenomenal. But anyway, you play as these like six characters um, and you just like go around and you like discover new things about the world. You discover this like bigger plot at hand with this like new force that like is out to get them. And it's just a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, I also started on audio The Island of Dr. Moreau, not The Island of, The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Sylvia Moreno-Garcia. I finally got it from the library. Um, and I'm about like... 30 minutes into the audiobook or like I listened to it for 30 minutes at about like 1.8 ish speed and I don't know how I feel about it yet like I'm not that interested yet um so I'm gonna have to let you know whether or not I want to continue on in this book I honestly don't even know what the book is about all I know is that it takes place in Mexico of some sort like some historical era in Mexico um and we're following this girl and her father is like a scientist or something um I don't really know much about the original story like the island of Dr. Moreau other than the fact that there's some sort of like chimera experimentation going on I don't really know much beyond that um and then I think there is some like white dude who's about to come into play in this story but I don't really know what's going on. I've also heard this book is very romance heavy which I'm a little confused by because the characters we've been introduced to so far are like the daughter who is 14 I believe and then potentially the like father's new assistant who I assume is not 14 um, and then there's also like a colonizer dude so like I don't really know who the romance will be between nor do I really want to know at this point to be quite honest with you i'm not sure um but anyway i'll keep you posted um but that is it for this check-in and i will see you at the next one hello friends happy 
Thursday. I did not check in yesterday, but I did finish Nona the Ninth. And let me tell you, that book picked right up after the halfway point and it did not stop. I thought the second half of that book was fucking phenomenal to the point where actually after I finished it, I know I said like the first half of the book was definitely a bit slow, but like after finishing the book, it just made me really appreciate those slower moments. So I almost like look back on like the slower parts that at the time I felt like were kind of fillery that were like, I don't know if this is necessary, but like Afterwards, I was like, absolutely, this is incredible. That being said, the first half of this book was really slow um, and it took me a while to get into it. So I did only give this one 4.5 stars, which is obviously still really great, um, but it is not the five stars that I've given uh, the series so far. Actually, I think I gave Gideon 4.5s too um, and only bumped it up on reread. And I think it's the same here where I feel like on reread, when things make more sense, it will be much more interesting um, and it will be less confusing because I think that was also a big thing for me is like how confusing this book was. Um, now that I finished it, I feel like I can give you like a rough idea of what this book entails. Um, but basically we pick up exactly where the epilogue in Harrow the Ninth left off. Um, and we're basically following our main character, Nona. She is a character sort of unknown to us. The kind of central mystery to this book is trying to figure out who Nona is. Um, and so as we do that, we get to know Nona. We get to know her caretakers very well. Um, Camilla, Pal, and uh, Pira are her like three main caretakers. And they kind of form this sort of like very dysfunctional found family kind of vibe, which I was obsessed with. I was so emotional about this like little family unit that they formed. Um, and I just really loved them. But anyway, throughout the book, we're trying to figure out who Nona is while um, the chapters are kind of like counting down or rather the parts in the book are counting down to the opening of the locked tomb, um, which if you don't know, is kind of like the overarching plot of this entire series. Um, and so that's kind of like the basic plot line. Nona and and Cam and Pal and Pira, they're all on what seems like a kind of like war-torn, um, apocalyptic version of Earth. And so at its heart, this book is also like a piece of apocalyptic fiction. Definitely one of the most creative and like unique takes on apocalyptic fiction that I've personally ever read. I think it's super interesting. I love it. <laughs> I thought that the way that certain things were revealed regarding the apocalypse were so well done, so interesting. And I think that this series just really just like crosses so many different subgenres of SFF that like it's just so hard to categorize at this point. Like for the first book I would say is pretty firmly like a magical murder mystery because you don't really see any of the sci-fi elements other than the kind of more technical like slightly more medically stuff that the sixth house is doing but from the second book onwards it's like a lot more sci-fi heavy there's just like so much going on in the series and like it is very confusing i did find this book really confusing i've seen a lot of reviews saying that it's less confusing than harrow and i think the only reason why people are saying that is because the storyline is like more linear and not non-linear like harrow however if you're like me and that's never really a, a problem like i don't find non-linear timelines to be inherently confusing because my brain just doesn't necessarily always work linearly like that either um and so i didn't find that part of harrow to be particularly confusing and i think that is the only thing that makes nona less confusing than harrow but everything else is more confusing because you have so many characters you have all the characters from the first two books you have new characters that we're meeting um, on Earth here in Nona and then some of the characters that we know may or may not be using different names or the same names and they may or may not look the same as they did before and so like trying to figure out who is who and keep track of who is who some people may be using multiple names and it's just like it's a clusterfuck of like weirdness I loved it I found it incredibly emotional I cried multiple times during this book and part of it is yes this is the third book in the series so I'm already like very attached to a lot of the characters so yeah i'm gonna be more emotional about it but i think also part of it is nona nona as a character is so fucking different than gideon and harrow gideon is a lesbian himbo if you haven't read it gideon is a lesbian himbo um and then the second book which focuses on harrow harrow is a unhinged emo teenager and so 
they're not exactly the most like emotional leads. And so having Nona is so different. Nona is just like the most endearing kind of like charming little like precious little cinnamon roll. Like you want to protect her at all costs. She's very childlike, but she's not like that to the point where it's annoying or like it feels like she's you know, ignorant or like naive, because she does still question the world. She's funny. She has a lot of heart. She loves, like, that is like her thing. Like, she just loves everyone. She loves everything. And she just wants to love so badly. Like, you put in so much emotion into it. You're like, I love Nona. And I just know that if Nona knew me, she would love me too. And it's just like so precious. And I just, I really, really, really loved Nona as a main character. And I think by the end, like, she's not necessarily my favorite of the three main characters. Because like, I don't think I can pick a favorite. I mean, no, that's a lie. Hera was my favorite. She's just my girl. Like, you know? Um, um, but I think Nona is the one that I feel most protective over and that like I feel most emotional about. Um, I just really love her. I think she's a fantastic main character um, and I cannot wait for this book to be out in the world because I just know that like people with more brain cells will read it and they will write up long thing pieces especially on Reddit. The Locked Tomb Reddit subreddit is like full of people who write essays. Um, and so I can't wait for this book to be out in the world so that I can read essays written by people who can actually explain to me what most of this book is about because I do think that like at least 60% of this book went right over my head um, because I don't have the brain cells to comprehend all of it. Um, but anyway, those are my thoughts on Nona the Ninth. I really love it. I really, really love this series. I, I don't talk about it, I feel, as much as I used to just because I feel like I read the first two books back in 2020 and then there was nothing released until this year so like I just didn't talk about it all of last year but it's one of my favorite series it's definitely like in my top five series SFS series of all time um I love it it's brilliant if you enjoy like a mind fuck like this is the most mind fucky series you will ever read truly um it is a ride it is phenomenal Tamsin Weir's writing style as always I love her writing style it is just like so in your face but also like the prose is beautiful and then you're like what am I reading <laughs> like there's so many moments in the book where you're just reading and you're like what the fuck like <laughs> yeah I just like I'm reading it and I'm like I can't believe this actually just happened but also I can because it's Tamsin Weir but anyway I will shut up about this book because I feel like I've talked about it long enough and I always feel like sequels are like harder to talk about because like less people are interested in them but as for what I'm reading next, I'm not really sure. I actually did start uh, Legendborn on audio, honestly, because I've been seeing so much hype for it because the second book is coming out soon and I've seen a lot of like people get the PR packages, which by the way, I'm so glad that they're actually sending those PR packages out to black reviewers because so many publishers don't do that. But anyway, I've been seeing so much hype because of those like PR packages. It looks so good. And like, I've been seeing, you know, people read it and love it. And like, I just want to be, I, want, I just want to join the hype train, you know? I know that so many of my friends love this series. And so like, I just really wanted to hop on the hype train, to be quite honest with you. But I'm on chapter three now. And there's like a couple of things that make me think that like, this might not be for me or just might not be for me right now. Um, and first of all, it's written in say it with me now, first person present tense. And I just don't know why authors continue to do this to me because truly it's a personal attack at this point. Um, but you all know, I don't like first person present tense. It's not you know, like, a true mark against the book or anything like that. It's just like a personal preference and it's just one that really turns me off a book. Second of all, um, I didn't know this going into the book because I actually didn't really know anything about the book other than that it has like a love triangle that a lot of people like and I love love triangles, look. Um, but also that it's like a modern fantasy kind of reimagining of like the Arthurian legends, which is like kind of interesting to me. Um, so I am kind of interested in it in that sense, but I didn't actually know anything about the plot. And what I didn't realize though, is that like the main character Brie, her mom dies. Like that's like the prologue of the book. Um, so like a good chunk of the book so far, anyway, the first two chapters is like her dealing with her grief. And I imagine that will be like a continuing theme um, throughout the book. Um, because the whole thing is that like she is this like high schooler she gets into this program to go to university early like I don't know first of all that whole thing is so weird to me I'm like just make her a freshman like I don't understand why she had to be a high schooler in university but anyway the whole point is that she is in this like 
program for high schoolers to be in university um and it is like a university that her mom went to so she really wants to go all that kind of stuff and so like i do think the grief will be like a huge theme um it's just like a lot for me right now i don't think my brain is in that headspace um so i don't know if i'll be continuing on for that reason i will probably give it a try at another time when i'm in like a better headspace uh for those types of themes but all that to say i don't really know what audiobook I will be starting next. I don't even know if I'm in the mood for another audiobook because like usually I read audiobooks because I want to play on my Switch but because when I want to play on my Switch these days I have been playing Xenoblade Chronicles 3 I don't know if like an audiobook is the way forward for me. I'm not sure um, but I will keep you posted um, on what I end up picking up for the rest of the week and I will see you at the next check-in. Hello friends, happy Friday! It is currently like almost 2 p.m. on Friday um, and it's actually the Friday before a long weekend so technically I finished work at 3 um, but I've been like very unproductive today because I don't know if you can hear my nose, I'm very congested. I, if you can hear my air filter thingy, I'm so sorry, but like it is what it is. I don't know what's going on in the air today, I don't know if it's a pollen count, I don't know if there's like mold in my apartment or something. I feel like I'm dying. Um, not to be dramatic, but like allergies, chronic allergies are such a pain. I think the other problem is also I'm allergic to cats and yet I have like one of the fluffiest cats ever. And so it's a problem, but also like, I don't really care. Like I would rather suffer <laughs> than not have Kava. So it is what it is. But anyway, I feel like I'm dying today. <laughs> I just like feel like so groggy but anyway i'm gonna try to work until i have to go to my physiotherapy appointment which is like another thing that like i'm starting physiotherapy for my back which i don't really want to do and i it's like one of the it's one of those things where i'm like i know i should be doing physiotherapy and i know i should have been but like my first experience with a physiotherapist for specifically for my back was just such a bad experience that i genuinely think i'm like kind of traumatized from it so anyway that was just like a long tangent about my life it's one of those things where i'm like i feel like it's just been taking up so much of my energy i feel like it's a lot of the reason why like my brain has like just not been coping with anything very well recently it's just like it's just there's just too much going on there's too much going on anyway i wanted to check in because i have started a couple of new books i started on audio yesterday um a dark queen rises by asha k banker which is the second book in the burnt empire series this is a reread i've already read the first two books i binge read them last year it is probably like the most underrated series in my opinion the third book came out earlier this year it is now the last book in the series which is kind of disappointing because it wasn't supposed to be the last book um so i'm a little nervous going into it to see if it'll wrap up but i think originally it was supposed to be like a nine book series give or take and like three kind of arcs and the first three books were always meant to be kind of like one complete arc so i am hopeful that at least it'll end off mostly wrapped up you know what i mean but i do want to get to it by the end of the year for sure um because it's also like much much shorter than the first two books like each book gets progressively shorter um unfortunately as well because i loved how long the first one like i just wanted to be in the world for longer but anyway i started on audio uh, my reread of book two um and i am loving my reread so far i'll link my reading vlog where i read the first two books last year if you want to know my detailed thoughts about the series like i said i think it's really really underrated i think if you like like really grand epic fantasies like the Dandelion Dynasty, you'll also really enjoy this series. Um, but I'll link my vlog so you can see my full detailed thoughts about both books. Um, but so far I'm really enjoying my reread. It's definitely holding up so far. I'm about 15% of the way through the audiobook. I also started because I did go out for dinner and I took with me a book on the subway and I started The School for Good Mothers by Jessamine Chan, which is a like literary dystopian fiction thriller situation i'm not really sure how to categorize this um but this is not a book that i've heard much about to be quite honest with you um but it caught my eye earlier this year because it was i think when it came out it was like one of those like indigo book picks or whatever it was one of the ones basically when you walk into the store it was just like plastered everywhere but i'd never seen it before and the cover caught my eye because like this is very much 
my vibe. Like, I really love this cover. I don't know what it is about it. Um, but I didn't buy it at the time, but I did actually pick up this one used for $5 um, when I was at Word on the Street. Um, and so I was really happy to pick this up. Um, but I am buddy reading this with my friend Dana. I will link her channel down below. You should definitely go check her channel out. Um, and I'm only about 40 pages into it, so I don't really know too much about it. But so far, I'm really enjoying it. We're basically following our main character, Frida, and right at the beginning of the story, it starts out with her having basically just like having a bit of a rough day. She is the daughter of like Chinese immigrants and she has a child who is a biracial child. So her husband is white or sorry, her ex-husband rather is white. And they live in this like small kind of like suburban town, I guess. Is it a town? I'm not sure, like a city, but it's it's in the suburbs, it's not the city. And her husband cheated on her and left her for like a much younger woman. Um, and she is struggling. She is struggling with like balancing life, balancing herself and being a single mother and also dealing with this very raw breakup that she's just had. Her husband is a piece of trash, to be quite honest with you. Um, but what happens at the beginning of the story is that she goes out for the day. She was only supposed to be gone for an hour, ended up being gone for longer, and she left her baby at home. And in this like kind of dystopian world, they're under like a much tighter kind of regime. It's like very kind of like Big Brother 1984-esque kind of vibes. Um, but what ends up happening is her neighbors call Child Protective Services on her and they take away her daughter. They give custody um, temporarily fully to her husband or her ex-husband, sorry, the father of the child. Um, and she ends up being put like on probation type of thing. And like the government comes in and puts like cameras all over her apartment. They won't let her see her baby. They won't let her have her back. Like it is like a whole thing. And she very adamantly is like, I, I'm not a bad mother. Like I'm not abusing my child. Like I just had to leave for the day. Right from the get go, it's like very emotionally charged. It's very like, haunting and like traumatic to be honest like I feel very stressed for this woman like she's not a perfect character she's already engaged in some behavior that I would be like ma'am get your shit together <laughs> she's obviously suffering from depression of some sorts in the first couple of chapters they talk about how even leading up to her pregnancy she was on uh, medication for her mental health issues um, it's not really clear though right now whether it's just like a continuation of her ongoing like depression or if it is specifically postpartum depression like that's not very clear I don't even know medically if that is like a distinction you can make um I don't really know enough about that um but basically this woman is going through it okay like she is suffering there's definitely like hints of like some messy messy shit about to go down and then all while this is happening though you have this kind of like surveillance state and again like I, it's very reminiscent of like a 1984 where it's like how do you know if these characters you're meeting can you trust them? Can you trust that they have Frida's best interests at heart? Can you trust that they are not going to be fucking racist? And I think just like instantly this book really captured me with the writing and the the tone of it and like just the uneasiness of everything. Um, and again, I'm very early days. I'm still only like 40 pages in, but I'm really hoping that it continues this kind of feeling and this kind of like commentary. Um, but I will keep you posted obviously on how I feel about this. Um, but so far I am enjoying it. But yeah, that is it for this check-in. Um, I don't know how much I'll be checking in over the weekend because while I do plan on reading The School for Good Mothers, um, I also plan on playing a lot of video games. <laughs> um, but maybe I'll do some like B-roll or I'll try to do some B-roll over the weekend. And I guess I will check in with you once I have some more updates. I don't know when that will be, but I will see you at the next one. Hello friends, happy Tuesday. <laughs> I don't even remember when I last checked in. I think it might've been Friday. I've been trying to take B-roll over the weekend, but to be honest, I haven't done much. I've not been like feeling very well. Um, so I've just kind of been like lying in bed and like feeling sorry for myself. Standard. Um, I don't really have too much to update. 
Well, I do kind of, but basically because I was feeling sorry for myself and also um, my friend Lena at Sufficiently Advanced Lena, if you don't know, she is my best dandelion dynasty buddy. And like, even though other people have been reading Speaking Bones and updating me, it's not had the same effect on me that like Lena reading it and updating me has been, you know? And so I was like, you know what? Maybe it's time to finally pick this up. If you don't know, Dandelion Dynasty is my favorite series of all time. <laughs> um, and obviously Speaking Bones, the last book just came out earlier this year. Um, and I had read about 10% of the book when it first came out. Um, but then I quickly realized that like, I just had so much going on at the time. Like I just started a new job and like, while I'm at work, it's just really hard for me to like get into a big chunky fantasy like this because like my brain is just not functioning after working hours. Um, and so I just like put it down and I didn't pick it back up. I also like, because a lot of people started reading this series in that time and started finishing the series um, and everyone was like giving it rave reviews. So I was like getting scared because I was like, what if my mental state affects my reading experience and it's not a five star experience for me you know like and it would not be the book's fault it would just be my fault and so i've just been scared to pick it up but because i had monday off because of labor day um i was like you know what maybe between sunday and monday i can like get some reading done because i didn't have time to read on saturday but i was like maybe between these two days i can actually like sit down and get some reading done i ended up getting another free trial of Scribd um, and <laughs> getting the audiobook from there just to help me kind of like pace myself. I don't love the audiobooks. Michael Kramer is not my favorite narrator. He's just, he doesn't enunciate his words. It's very frustrating. Um, and so whenever I listen to his audiobooks, I have to be like reading along. Like I can't just be listening to it. So I've actually made some really good progress on Speaking Bones. I'm actually already 40% of the way through it um, and loving it so far. Like, it's just like being back in this world is so comforting to me being back with the characters I know and love comforting there is some epic battles as well like if you feel like especially in the veiled throne if you feel like you were missing those like battle scenes speaking bones speaking bones has you covered um I am someone who doesn't like necessarily love battle scenes um but I do love the way Ken Liu does them because what he does is that he splits the actual battle into like different parts so the one I'm in like the battle I'm in right now is split into like three parts and he does this throughout the series too when he has like epic battles where he does like scenes in the battle scenes um and then every time he introduces new technology because like technology is such a big part of this world um and that like every time they introduce new like military technology he does like flashbacks to when they like discovered or invented that technology and i really like that because i find sometimes that like just like massive battle scenes are just too much and the way that he does it where he does the flashbacks and like the callbacks and then explains like the science behind the world and like the invention um, I really like that like I feel like it works very well with like the way my brain processes things and so I really really enjoy that um, and uh, I've already cried once in this book like it's just so good um, will I be reading it throughout the week honestly probably not I'm trying to like be easier on myself and just like not force myself or not want to force myself but like not feel like I'm not accomplishing anything if I don't read because I do sometimes feel like I want to read more so that I have more content to make but I've also recently like you all know been obsessed with like playing on my switch and I just feel like I want to try and like give in to those urges a bit more because sometimes I sit down with my switch and I play for like five hours and then I feel like I've like wasted an, e an evening and I feel like it's, it's also like a thing where it's like I have to reframe my mindset and stop thinking of like video games as a waste of time because my parents always like told me growing up that like video games were a waste of time and like didn't offer any sort of like value but like also I have fallen in love with like playing video games on my switch and so like I'm trying to like still get rid of that that mindset you know what I'm saying because I don't think it's I don't think it's true because like I said like Xenoblade Chronicles 3 like the game I'm playing right now like the storytelling is like fantastic and I don't see how that's any less valuable than like reading a book you know what I'm saying anyway all that aside <laughs> my point is that like I don't know if I'll be getting much more read of Speaking Bones throughout the week um but I will be trying to tackle it again on the weekend I think that's gonna be my approach to this book in particular just because like I again I want to appreciate it fully like I don't want to be like in the wrong headspace for it so I think I'm gonna dedicate like weekend time to reading Speaking Bones and then throughout the week I'll just do whatever I can't remember when I last updated you guys about this one um but I'm on page like 96 
Um, which is so funny because, like, so I'm buddy reading this. I don't know if I said this before, but I'm buddy reading this with Dana. And she messaged and she was like, I just got to this page. And we're not really, like, buddy reading in the sense that, like, we're, you know, like, lining up our pages exactly. But she said she was, like, on page 90. And I was like, Dana, I'm on page 96. <laughs> I'm, like, ex at exactly the same part. Um, and basically where I'm at now is that she has just gone to this school, like the school for good mothers. Um, and I think this is where we're going to get really into like the dystopian shit. Um, and I don't really have much to update to be quite honest. Cause I, like I said, I'm still so early on and I've already kind of said a little bit about it. I feel like, um, but I am really enjoying it so far. I'm very confused by the low ratings for this on Goodreads. Like I went to update my Goodreads status and this has like shockingly low ratings, not shockingly, but like it's got like a 3.5 or something, which is not that high. And I'm really enjoying it. I'm really loving the writing. I'm really loving like the social commentary. Um, and then like also I find it very like anxiety inducing in a way where like I feel like this book is trying to do that and so like because of that like I just find this book so terrifying it's not thrilling in the sense that like it's like you know fast paced or anything like that but I would still consider it to be a bit of like a psychological thriller because it has those like elements where it puts you on edge it is terrifying to think about like the way these things are and like how closely they align to the reality of like North America. I feel like I do have to take this book in small doses because it's just a lot. It's just, it's, it's just a lot. Um, but I am really enjoying it. Um, so those are my initial thoughts on those two books. But yeah, that is it for today. That is it for this vlog. Uh, obviously not the most successful week in the sense that like I have not finished a lot of books. Um, but I still feel like it's been a successful week because I've enjoyed what I've been reading. But anyway, as always, if you stuck around till the end, I super, super appreciate it. Um, and if you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below. And if you can't think of anything, leave me a bone emoji for speaking bones. Um, and yeah, if you like this video and you wanna see more from me, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Mm -hmm.